My name is Courtney Vandermey. I am with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, and this morning we're going to talk about the Agri Protecting Livestock Grant Program, also called the PROTECT program. So if you hear the short term PROTECT, we're talking about this program. So this morning I'm going to give an overview of the program, details on the request for proposals, and then a step-by-step -step look at the actual application. So the Agri Protecting Livestock Grant Program. The goal of this program is to help farmers and ranchers buy and install supplies and equipment that will prevent livestock disease outbreaks or protect animals not currently covered under an existing depredation program. So right away, what do I mean by existing depredation program? An example of this would be the MDA's Wolf Livestock Conflict Prevention Grant. Um, Things that would be eligible under the Wolf Livestock Grant would not be eligible under this program. So again, we're looking for things that pre prevent, bleh, prevent livestock disease outbreaks um, or other risks to your livestock. So some fast facts. There's 500,000 available. Minimum request is $500. Maximum request is $10,000 per farming operation. There is a 50% or one-to-one, -one, however you wanna look at it, cash match required. So for that minimum request, you're spending $1,000 to receive 500. For that maximum request, you're spending 20,000 to receive that 10,000. And that's anywhere in between. And then lastly, we're using an expedited review process for farm servants, poultry, and ratites. So again, good question. What do you mean by expedited review process? So proposals for this program will be accepted until 4 p.m. on March 7th. The system shuts down at 4 p.m. I'm gonna say that a few times during this presentation. So 4 p.m. We, we're accepting applications until on March 7th. Applications are scored by our reviewers, but based on the application scoring sheet that is in the request for proposals. I will show you that request for proposals document in a little bit. But proposals that address priority livestock, including farm servants, poultry, and ratites, will be considered on a first come, first serve basis throughout the application period. We will notify those applicants as they are approved as soon as we can. If a priority species application is, is complete and meets expectations, it will be approved if funds are still available. Funds are still available as of this morning, so we're doing okay. So again, if a priority species application is complete and it meets expectations, it will be approved. And I will explain that on the next slide as well. After March 7th, reviewers will consider applications that involve other livestock. We expect to notify everyone of their grant status by April 15th. So I said I was gonna touch on it. What do you mean by complete and meets expectations? That means all required questions are answered. And once you see the application, those required questions have a star next to them. And also the system won't let you submit without that. But um, then also reviewers are able to understand your project and how it will prevent livestock disease. So explaining in enough detail for our reviewers to understand what you're doing and how it will help your operation. And then the budget must have enough details that show that you research the cost. Moving on to eligible applicants. So who is able to apply for this grant? An applicant must be a principal operator of a livestock operation in Minnesota, be a resident of the state of Minnesota or a business entity authorized to farm in Minnesota, be in good standing with the state of Minnesota, which includes no back taxes owed and no defaults on Minnesota state back financing for the last seven years, and must also not be an employee of the MDA or a spouse of an employee of the MDA. So key question, who is a principal operator? So a principal operator is the person primarily responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the farm. This person may be the owner, hired manager, cash tenant, share tenant, or a partner in the farm. Another key question. I do not raise livestock, but my business works with livestock and livestock producers. 
Some examples of this may be a veterinary clinic, feed production, animal rescue, zoo, just to name a few. Is my operation eligible? No. For the PROTECT grant, the PROTECT grant is designated for operations that are directly involved in livestock production and must be considered a farm. A farm is any place from which 1,000 or more agricultural products was produced and sold or normally would have been produced and sold during the year. Some examples of eligible projects are listed here. These are just some examples. If you have an idea that meets the goals of the program, it very likely would be eligible. But just to give some examples, projects include but not limited to legislatively compliant fencing for farm servant operations, exclusionary fencing to protect honeybee colonies from damage by bears, electronic ID systems, livestock handling chutes, isolation pens, truck washes, air filtration systems, Danish entry systems, exclusion systems to keep wild birds and vermin out of livestock facilities, pen covers for outdoor poultry, and systems to scare wild bird species away from poultry operations. Some other project details. So relating to the project, again, I include a one-to-one -one match, so that 50% from personal or other non-state sources. The project must be completed between July 1, 2023 and March 31st, 2025. So that's you've purchased the items, you've completed the project in between that date range. Also, the project must be completed in Minnesota. What does match look like? I've mentioned this 50% match a few times. So again, the Protect Grant reimburses 50% of the project cost up to that $10,000. You must provide documentation showing the full, full cost of the project. So it, again, it is a reimbursement grant. So to receive the grant, you must purchase and pay for the, the project and then submit documentation. I'll, I'll show the documentation again a little bit later. So to further emphasize this, I've got an example. So farmer A gets a bid for a fence that costs $20,000. He applies for 10,000 in grants fund, grant funds and is awarded a contract. Farmer A then buys the items listed in the budget section of his contract and pays for the items. He then will submit his documents for reimbursement and will receive a check for, from the MDA for that $10,000. Some important dates that I really wanna highlight with this program, February 29th at 4 p.m. is the deadline to submit questions. We post questions to our web page, so that is the deadline to get those questions and answers to the web page. Um, and I'll go into how to submit questions, I believe, on the next slide. Um, March 7th at 4 p.m., again, the system shuts down at 4. We will not accept late applications. Applications must be in by the March 7th at 4 p.m. April 15th, we, we plan to notify every one of their grant status, and then May 1st is that um, anticipated contract start date. So I mentioned this on the last slide. How do you submit a question? Um, questions will be submitted in writing. So by emailing mda.agrigrants at state.mn.us. Um, put protect grant in the subject line so we know what, what the question relates to. And then responses are again posted to the protect webpage. So if I'm awarded my, a grant, what is my next steps? This is a really brief summary of what the steps look like, um, but it'll give you an idea of what to expect. So first you'd be notified that your application was approved and you'd be notified of the award. You would then be asked to submit, to submit an IRS Form W-9. This form gets, you into, gets your information into our accounting system so we know where to mail your check to. Next, you would sign a grant contract agreement. This is stating that you're gonna do the work on your project and then we're afterwards, we're gonna pay, reimburse you that 10%. From there, you would submit the documents for reimbursement and then receive your reimbursement once that is complete. Just please note that grants are considered taxable income. So what documents do I have to submit for reimbursement? You would be submitting an invoice from the vendor and then a document showing that the vendor was paid. So we consider this proof of purchase and proof of payment. 
That proof of payment could look like a zero balance invoice, cleared check, or a bank credit or loan statement. So going back to my farmer A example, he would collect the invoice and maybe the cleared check for, for his fence, and then he would submit that to the MDA for reimbursement. So again, showing that the items were purchased and showing that they were paid for. So a couple key questions here. Can I include hired labor as part of my project? Yes. If you pay the hired labor, you will you will need again, you will need an invoice and proof of payment. Um, your personal labor is not eligible. So again, if you pay your labor, it would be eligible. Next question, can I buy used equipment? Yes, but again, the same thing. You must have an invoice and proof of payment. And then just a friendly reminder with used equipment, do your homework, make sure it's in good condition and it'll work for your project needs and your farm's needs. Um, but again, as long as invoice and proof of payment, it would be eligible. Moving on, so next we're gonna get into how to apply. I'm gonna talk about the request for proposals and then applying using our online application system. If you visit the Protect Grant webpage, there's two boxes on the right side of the screen. One would be an apply here box and the other one of forms and resources. First, I'm gonna talk about the request for proposals that's located in the forms and resources. This is a good document to look at eligibility, the scoring sheet, and then also you could get a preview of the questions before you actually go into the application in our online system. So that request for proposals is a 14 page document. Some highlights I've pointed out here with the arrows. On page three, there are instructions on how to apply. On page seven is the application scoring sheet, which we're gonna look in further detail, um, I believe on the next slide. Um, and then the applicant, Applicant questions, the beginning of them starts on page 11. So I mentioned that application scoring sheet. How are reviewers scoring those applications? First, they're gonna look at the eligibility section. Is the applicant a Minnesota resident or have authority to farm in Minnesota? Does the applicant raise livestock? Then they're gonna look at, is, is it a priority species? Is it one that we're gonna use that expedited review process on? Next, project need. Does the applicant clearly and compellingly describe the need for the project, including the disease risk to livestock and how the project will benefit the livestock operation? This section is worth 40 points. So as you're considering what you're writing, consider that that's a, that's a significant amount of points. Next, moving into the project impact, what is the likelihood that the project will reduce the impact of livestock disease or predation? That section's worth 30. Again, another high scoring section. Budget narrative, does the budget clearly detail all project costs and is the budget cost effective and the plan, plan purchases backed by quotes or other sources? So a good question here, should I be collecting bids for this grant application? Bids and quotes are not required, they are an optional. You may include these documents if they help explain the details of the, and costs of your project. That section is worth 25 points for that budget section. And lastly, the priority points for historically underserved applicants is worth five points. Our reviewers are gonna mark a yes or no if, if they believe it's gonna be funded. Again, just think about, is my application complete and meeting expectations? Moving into the actually how to get into our online system to apply. Um, there is a resource available on the website in the forms and resource section if you need further assistance. Um, the online application guide will give a kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to do this as well. So I'm going into some information that is available there. Um, if you've been in our system before, you would log in with the email address and password that you've used. Um, if you forgot your password, it'll send you that email link to reset your password and you're able to get in. Um, if you are new and have never applied for a grant from us before, you will create a new account. When you're creating a, an account, the first thing that's going to come up is it's going to ask for an organization name. What if you don't have an, or, an official organization? In this box, I would include your first and last name. Similar to the application, anything that is required has a star by it, so you would need to fill that in. Um, this information here is using to create the account. We will contact you based on what is actually in the application. So just keep that in mind. 
this does create you an account. So this is contact information. We could call you, but we will use what's in the application to notify you of that grant application. So make sure that phone number and email address in your application is correct. Once you're logged in, it'll take you to the applicant dashboard. Um, if you've applied for a grant in the past, your previous grants will show up under either active requests or historical requests. To get to this grant application, you will go to the top of your screen next to the house is an apply button. Once you once you click that, another screen will open and you'll want to find the protect grant. Currently, it is the first grant when you log in, but if you do not see it at the top, you will want to scroll down until you find the protect grant. Um, You'll probably notice right away that the questions won't align with what you're doing if you go into the wrong application, but just to save you the time, find the protect grant and it should look something like this. So again, you're looking for protecting livestock grant protect agri FY24. Once you've found the correct program, you could, if you want to review the request for proposals, again, the blue protecting livestock um, text there would take you to that. It's a link. Um, otherwise, on the right side, there is an apply next to that 3724 date. So once you hit apply, it'll take you into the actual application. Your contact information that you entered when you created the account is at the top, um, but then it gives further instructions. So just make sure that um, you answer the questions fully, um, you review the application scoring sheet, and then questions that marked with a star are required. And then just the friendly reminder, make sure when you're done, you hit submit at the bottom. We'll go over that again in a little bit. Um, first will be your contact information. Again, this will be how we will get a hold of you if you are awarded. So be sure that this information is correct. Next, we'll get into the project title and farm description. Under a few questions, we have an example of how we want you to fill it out. So project title is one of them. Start with farm name, comma, item you are requesting. And then there's a couple examples there, such as Peterson Farm, comma, exclusionary fencing. So just follow the format. It makes it a little easier for our reviewers. Then give a farm, farm description. Briefly describe your farming or ranching operation. So then next, moving into the risk to livestock and project description. This is where you want to make sure you provide enough detail for our reviewers to understand what you are doing and how it is preventing disease and other risks and how it is helping your operation. So risk to livestock, describe the risk to the health and well-being of your livestock that your project will address. And then project description in three to five sentences, what are you going to do? Include the need for the items and how and why they will reduce the risk to your livestock and how the project will benefit your operation. Project cost and match. Um, I gave a really simple example here. So my total project cost in this example is 10,000. Total amount I'm requesting is five and then total amount of match that I will provide is five. So in this case, um, box two and three should add up to box one. Project date, I talked about that July 1, 2023 to March 31st, 2025. If you've done your project already, you can put in the date that you completed it within that range. If you have not, when do you anticipate starting it? So your best guess at when you anticipate being able to complete this project. Then moving on to the budget section, you have the option to either upload an Excel or Word document or filling out our budget table. Regardless of which way you do it, it should look something like the example. So you're looking to put in the item, quantity, cost per unit, total estimate, and the source of the estimate. Um, the second box at the bottom will give you the option to either do that, again, upload or go to the table. And the table looks like this. So you would fill it out as complete as possible. Um, Again, if you identify sources and contractors now, it may save you time later when we're doing the contracting process. Um, you would be able to in all the text boxes, so all everything is fillable except for the one, two, three, four, five, and then the row at the very top. Moving on to the budget narrative and quotes. Um, so again, describe the need for each item listed in your budget. 
Explain how you plan to pay for the project. Does it include financing, other grants, private investment, personal investment, other organization funds? Um, again, while state funds, state grants cannot be used as match, non-forgivable loans would be eligible in this case. Um, and then lastly, number three, how important is this grant to your ability to undertake this project? If your application is not funded, what are alternatives to fund to financing your project? So think through those different aspects when describing your budget narrative. And then you can also upload um, those optional quotes and other sources. Again, not required, but there is an upload a file section. Um, if you have difficulty uploading, feel free to email our mda.agrigrants at state.mn.us. We'll help you out, but it, the upload option is there. Lastly, the underserved applicants. Um, it's the state's policy to consider diversity, equity, and inclusion in grant making. But again, this question is optional. You don't have to answer it, but it is an option. And lastly, be sure that you click the submit button. Um, I don't want to call at phone or a phone call at 401 saying like, hey, I didn't get that email saying my application went through. Be sure you hit click that submit at the bottom of the application. Um, from there, once you do hit that submit button, just to make sure it works. Oh, if you don't if you don't answer all the questions, you will get this error message. Um, I didn't answer any of the questions when I filled it out, so that's all the errors that are possible. Um, so be sure it goes through. And then once it does, you get a confirmation email that looks something like this saying, hey, your application to Agri Protecting Livestock grant has been submitted. So be sure you click submit. You would get this confirmation email once you do get click submit. So good question. What if I already submitted an application, but I learned something new today? Our grants team, team can grant you access if you do need to edit it. Um, so give us a call. Our phone number is on there, 651-201-6500, and we'll reopen it for you. But you would need to hit submit again. So just because you make changes, um, it doesn't automatically resubmit. So again, important to click that submit button at the end of the application. You wouldn't then again receive that confirmation email. Couple grant writing tips just to make sure your, your application is complete. Um, share your draft with a friend or community member to request feedback. Um, also read that request for proposals. There's some good um, eligibility, eligibility and review that scoring sheet. So how is my application scored? Reviewers do, reviewers look at that scoring sheet as they're reviewing your application. So make sure you understand how points are awarded, make sure your project is eligible, and make sure you have good cost estimates. I want to put those important dates up there. That March 7th one is the one I really want to emphasize, and I do this with all my grant programs. Make sure your application is in before 4 p.m. Um, again, I, I always receive a call at 401, but we will not accept late applications, so be sure to get your application in early. Thank you for your time this morning. Um, again, my contact information is on the screen if you need me. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to our Agri Grants team and we'd be happy to help you. Have a great rest of your morning.